So the idea behind MicroXRF, on one side, you deal with bulk XRF, so bulk XRF is this uh, standard method if it comes to elemental analysis, and you can go down to the single PPM range. On the other hand, but bulk, analysis, uh, bulk XRF doesn't give you the special solution or the information at which location I can find which element, which concentration. Um, on the other hand, if you want to do um, elemental analysis on a micro scale or nano scale range, um, then you're using um, electron microscopy. So now when you're looking to combine both methods and what is bridging both methods is then MicroXRF, which gives you a better analytical uh, detection performance compared to EDS and gives you a better um, um, resolution compared to bulk. And if you are coming, if you come from the XRF side, you frequently want to know where I can find which element in a smaller dimension. Uh, but probably in your EDS la uh, laboratory, there's a long lead time to get these samples measured. Vice versa, you do EDS analysis, but you may struggle a little bit with the uh, detection limit performance because usually then talk about 1000 ppm. But then detecting elements in the lower um, range, then it becomes very challenging. So then MicroXF really can bridge and can really provide a solution and can help you to speed up the process. And that's one of the major benefits. So you combine the analytical performance with a specialized solution. MicroXF also is a non-destructive method, and that's a, a key feature if you think, if you want to analyze very valuable objects, like shown here. So this is a Van Meer painting. The value of this painting is 120 million. Um, of course, uh, you don't want to use any destructive method. So no sample preparation is crucial. Then the trace element sensitivity. So this is a garnet, so this is a ge geological sample, where here you see then the elemental distribution uh, beginning from aluminum react to iron. Um, information depth also is one key feature. What you see here, this is the video image of the integrated circuit. And here then you see the elemental distribution image. And you also get an idea about insight within the integrated circuit. So it's not encapsulated. And what you see here, is, so the, the gold bonding wires. And you also see here then the, the bonding pads coated with silver. So it gives you an insight to your sample. If you compare it with other methods, here, the, the key features are summarized. For MicroXRF, there's no sample preparation necessary. If you go to EDXRF or SEM EDS, then um, there's sample preparation involved. If you go to the scale, um, MicroXRF goes down into the between 10 and 20 micrometer range. Of course, with electron microscope, you go below the one micrometer range. Concerning the detection range, if it comes to the elements, um, you have an excellent light element um, detection if you have electron excitation. So you can start from beryllium. Um, EDXRF usually you start from sodium, the new instrument we have introduced. So we overcome this limitation so we can then start with elements below sodium. Um, concerning the mapping range with MicroXRF you can map areas like 20 centimeters times 15 centimeters uh, where you then deal with the limitation if it comes to an electron microscope. What does it mean, no sample preparation? So this is just a geological sample here. You put it in the instrument, you do the mapping, and this is then the mapping result, the elemental distribution image, um, silicon, potassium, manganese, and iron. Or here you have some glass beads, and you want to analyze the composition of the glass beads. So there is no sample preparation involved, so you just take this, uh, the, the glass beads as they are, and you perform the mapping. You also can do layer analysis. For instance, if you have a layer system here with three layers, you have to use a different method, so a dedicated method. And what you see here is then the distribution of the thickness. In this case here, it's the top coating here. Blue is then about 370 nanometers, and it goes down to 20 nanometers or zero. 